good morning everyone good morning chair persons so thank you organizing committee for inviting me here and sharing my experience so uh, as an uh, breast imaging expert since uh, many years i'm working uh, in a tertiary care institution and uh, uh, we have seen lot of advanced stages breast cancer so what are the challenges we are facing in our country in our, all of you have agreed that uh, in our country there is less awareness and uh, most of the women are presented very late stage so we have to focus our uh, our uh, Uh, our vision towards the early detection and the screening of the breast cancer to fight uh, like that the western countries have uh, focused on the early detection and the screening so uh, how the radiology can help that uh, the screening and the early detection because in these areas the radiology is uh, almost uh, the uh, leader in the screening uh, in the western world so uh, i'm sharing my experience and i put the cases uh, to show that uh, how we can how can use that uh, modalities radiological modalities efficiently for this uh, challenges so we as we all know the breast cancer is one of the most uh, common malignancy as was the, the challenge in our country uh, why it is a challenge in our country because the five year survival rate of the breast cancer is in high income group is 80% as compared to below 40% in the low income countries and as well as in india also so diagnosis of the breast cancer at the advanced stages basically this is the common uh, factor behind this low uh, survival rate in our country and it is uh, that we all uh, uh, observe that the reason for this is the less awareness and limited access to the diagnostic and the treatment facilities in the rural and the suburban areas and uh, along with that uh, we have observed there are a lot of social stigma gender inequality fear and no screening program for our government side and uh, in indian women even uh, i have observed in my phd i have done my phd in that breast cancer uh, related topic uh, in the mri breast and uh, over the period of many researches i also observed that indian women having breast cancer are one decade younger than the western counterparts and uh, in these cases uh, as the uh, younger women have the more aggressive uh, cancers in that so uh, these areas also are very challenging in our country because these uh, these women also presented with that the larger lump so uh, we have to focus our uh, vision towards the early detection and uh, with all those things are increasing that the higher mortality and uh, these are the challenges these these type of cases we see in almost the routine the uh, routine scenario in that uh, the uh, the uh, patient comes with the later stages with larger lumps multiple lesions and many a times i have seen the bilateral cancer especially in the uh, covid uh, time i have seen many women have come with the bilateral cancers and the metastatic cancers also so it may be that because of few months they are not reaching to the tertiary care hospital and then the they, when they uh, they come to the us at that all, almost the bilateral or the multiple lesion or the metastatic cancer and because that the, the usually the lump are the painless so that is why they are not presenting to the uh, doctor they see that it because the pain is not there so it is not a problem for them so the screening is that the very important tool for the fight with that uh, breast cancer and we have used the different modalities for the breast imaging um, mammographies we all know the gold standard in the evaluation breast ultrasound we can use it as an adjuvant with that mammography and elastography and color doppler also we use for to for the more efficient use of the breast ultrasound the breast uh, mri is a very very sensitive uh, imaging modality and we can use uh, it as a problem solving and the pre and post operative workup and the functional mr is very very useful for differentiation between the benign and the malignant lesion non invasive way
So as we all know, the radiology work in the Barrett's uh, category, which is that we uh, all use in the American College of Radiology standards, which uh, they have uh, provided us. And we in India, we are mostly using this uh, Barrett's. So the mammography is, we all know that the, it is the radiograph of the breast, but that the conventional mammogram and the digital mammogram with tomosynthesis have uh, some um, differentiation. The conventional mammogram, which we, are, we were using few years back, had that uh, not very, very sensitive, especially in the dense breast. However, that now uh, that digital mammogram with the tomosynthesis is a, a very, very sensitive technique, uh, which is overcome that limitation of the overlapping structures. So this is that the uh, our, uh, digital breast tomosynthesis and the camera moves in the 25 degree uh, in the rotation and they acquire multiple lesions which further we reconstruct that and produce the uh, very very small less than 1 mm uh, image of the breast. So there is a less, this is the DBT machine, which moves from here to the 25 degree from this side and 25 degree from the other side, and it takes the multiple uh, projection. So it, it, it's, uh, uh, that is why we have used that. This is a lesion, which is uh, uh, obviously it's uh, detected in the screening and uh, it's the margins are not very clear and that's margin is, uh, fuzzy and not very, very circumscribed, which is uh, more clearly seen in the tomosynthesis images. Uh, this is another case which uh, I've diagnosed in the screening only, that 68-year-old female. And this lesion is uh, uh, detected on the screening, very, very small lesion. And uh, this is the microcalcification also we have detected on the mammography. So these all those example of the uh, cases which uh, turn out to be the malignant uh, and diagnosed on the screening mammogram. In the dense breast parenchyma, there is a chances of the uh, lesion which we missed. See in this, uh, this example, it, it is uh, because it is the young patient, the, the uh, brain, breast parenchyma is very dense and this lesion is almost hidden in the dense breast parenchyma. However, in the tomosynthesis images, it is very clear there is a speculated mass over there and which is posterior. So that is why the females, generally the posterior lesion, they cannot uh, find out that the lump is there. Uh, we can use the tomosynthesis to uh, to see the, the margins of the lesion more clearly. So the better characterization it, as well as the assignment of the biorates could, could be given more confidently with this. Uh, this is an MRI of the same patient. These patients are volunteer in my PhD research. So they have, uh, means a lot of MRI I have done in these. This is a young 36 year old female. And she has also come with that. She has come with the, the presenting uh, lump, but the dense breast parenchyma is uh, very faintly showing this uh, mass. And uh, in the tomosynthesis images, it is very clearly that the speculated mass is there and along with that, the few calcification specks also there. This is the ultrasound of this patient and it came out to be the invasive ductal carcinoma. This is the um, left side operated uh, breast for the breast cancer and in the, the screening of the contralateral breast had detected a small lesion in the posterior aspect, axillary tail area. This is uh, uh, the sub areolar uh, mass is there with the retraction of the nipple and it is clearly seen in the mammogram. So the nearly 40% breast cancer mortality reduction there we can observe when the women start annual screening at the age of 40 years. However, the sensitivity of mammography for detection of breast cancer is 85 but the dense breast is reduces it 47.8 to 64.4 percent. So uh, how it's we had overcome this challenge of the breast dense breast for the radiologist. So we uh, we can use the different uh, modalities like as show you that the tomosynthesis as well as the help of the ultrasound adju adjuvant uh, we can use that and the MRI breast.
So the dynamic contrast enhanced MRI breast is a very, very uh, excellent sensitivity to detect the breast cancer. And it has a quite a very good specificity also in various research. So this is the MRI machine we, uh, I'm using three Tesla and uh, the breast can breast imaging should be done in the dedicated breast channel. So this is the breast ca breast uh, uh, imaging channel uh, and uh, it, it has that two cavity to put the breast and uh, breast and axilla we can uh, uh, evaluate at the same time. So what is the multi-parametric MRI best, which is my PhD research area? So the uh, multi-parametric MRI breast conclude the the non-contrast MRI as well as don, uh, the dynamic contrast MRI as well as the few functional imaging. So in the overall, these uh, kind of thing are very high sensitivity and specificity and uh, it has a very, very good non-invasive way to detect the breast cancer. So these are the indications we can follow for the breast MRI. However, it is a very good for the high risk screening uh, breast cancer also. So the ACR Barrett's is the same uh, as the we follow for the mammography. And in that, this is the non-contrast images, which are showing very good margins on the uh, MRI. And it's a very, very small lesions also detect. These are the internal enhancement path characteristics, which show that uh, this is like the benign pathology and these are the malignant pathology. Rim enhancement can be in the infective as well as the uh, malignant pathology. So we use in these type of cases the other uh, non-contrast as well as the, the functional uh, uh, characteristic in this. This is the screening patient, this is the, which is detected on the um, mammogram and on the ultrasound, it is showing that the hypoechoic irregular mass uh, showing the color Doppler also. And in MRI, it show the enhancement characteristic of the uh, carcinoma. So the biopsy ultrasound guided biopsy was done and it came out to be the invasive ductal carcinoma. This is another case on the contralateral breast uh, uh, in the uh, right side is operated and left side is presented with the, uh, another car lesion and which turn out to be the malignant. This is ultrasound guided biopsy was done and it also turned out to be the invasive ductal carcinoma. This is a case of uh, this lady has presented with a right side mass and she came for the mammogram. So the mammogram in these type of cases is very, very efficient to detect the contralateral breast lesion. So we pick up this lesion on the uh, mammogram screening uh, on the contralateral breast. And so we, we went for the uh, biopsy of both lesions and uh, both lesions turn out to be the IDC. This is another interesting case, this 54 year old postmenopausal female, she presented with the palpable lump in the left breast. This is the large, large, uh, uh, this is the large mass and which are palpable. And she came for the mammogram. And we detected uh, the, another suspicious lesion in the right breast also. So the uh, dense breast. So in the tomosynthesis images, we can see clearly there is a mass in the left breast, upper outer area. And the suspicious mass on the right side also clearly seen on the tomosynthesis images, which also showing the speculated margins. This is the MRI of the same patient, which detected both the lesion very, very clearly. This is the MIP image of the post-contrast post dynamic, and which is just showing the, both the images, both the lesion, and uh, both showing the characteristic of the um, malignant lesion. And we did both the biopsy and the, uh, uh, the left-sided, which uh, the palpable mass came out to be infiltrated ductal carcinoma grade two. And the contralateral side, the right side, the smaller lesion turned out to be the invasive lobular carcinoma. So the, uh, this patient has presented two different 
uh, histopathological finding into the, both breasts. And uh, she has, uh, on the PET scan, she had the bone mets also. So the bilateral multifocal carcinoma and the different histopathological subtype, the patient was treated with the systemic chemotherapy. This is a case which patient came with the mass on the nipple uh, areola uh, since, since it's progressively increasing but slow growing mass. And uh, we use that uh, mammogram, tomosynthesis, as well as this is the plain MRI and uh, not much mass in the, uh, in the breast or the subareolar region, most of the mass over the nipple and the extru extrusion of the papillary growth. And uh, the, this is the uh, ultrasound images. It turned out to be the nipple papilloma with dysplasia. This case we have published in, uh, uh, in a journal also, JCDR. So in this type of cases, which are very, very dense, and this lady has presented with nipple discharge, bloody nipple discharge. And in the mammogram, this, uh, nothing is visible. So uh, because the play patient is clinically positive, uh, the dynamic contrast MRI had detected the non-mass enhancement in the right side. And uh, on the biopsy was done, and this turned out to be the DCIS with invasive uh, ductal carcinoma. So the multi-parametric uh, MRI is very, very sensitive imaging, which can detect all this kind of uh, non-mass as well as the mass findings. Uh, this is another example of the screening. The images uh, sh the, um, showing the speculated mass. This is the MRI dynamic contrast. This lady is having a very uh, in the uh, another uh, the contralateral mast uh, contralateral breast is showing some some area which is also needs further evaluation however it looks like a circumscribed smooth margin on mri it is showing that the the other uh, contralateral breast lesion type 1 contrast enhancement homogeneous so it is the benign that uh, she is uh, coming for follow up since many years and it is stable now this is uh, yeah, so um, I just show that MR ductography also we can use. And this is that multiple lesions, multifocal. In Paget's disease also the MRI is very, very useful. I just show one uh, image, one, this is the non-contrast MRI, which is that the advanced technology we can use. And this I presented and Chicago and it made that 3D image. This is the non-contrast MRI, which is beautifully showing the mass. So this is the future of uh, uh, the MRI. We can use that efficiently without any contrast also. Uh, so this, this is the result of that. And the breast intervention also we should use efficiently with the image guiding procedures. So thank you so much for the kind attention and we should move for the multidisciplinary approach and working as a team and for this fight with the breast cancer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Patiksha for excellent talk with informative images. Uh, questions can be taken up later on at the time of lunch or personally because of shortage of time. So we invite next speaker. Yeah, questions can be taken up later on personally or at the time of lunch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So now